Chinese President Xi Jinping is expected to visit Hong Kong on July 1st for the celebration of the city's 25-year anniversary of its return to China. This event is important as it will be President Xi's first trip outside of mainland China since the start of the pandemic. This event is also important as it will mark the two-year anniversary of Hong Kong's controversial national security law. Over the past two years, Western media has been very critical of this law, stating that China has been cracking down on Hong Kong's freedoms and its judicial independence. In 1997, China promised Hong Kong to preserve the concept of one country, two systems for 50 years. Now that Hong Kong is officially at the midway point of this agreement, only one question remains. Has China broken its promise to Hong Kong? Let's take a closer look in today's video. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Masterworks.io. Stay tuned to the end to hear a special offer from today's sponsor. Over the last 25 years, Hong Kong citizens have organized numerous protests against the Beijing government. The first one that I personally experienced came during the 2014 Umbrella Movement when I was living in Hong Kong. This, of course, was just a warm up for what became a massive citywide protest in 2019 against an extradition bill that would have allowed criminals in Hong Kong to be extradited to Taiwan and mainland China. Most people have completely forgotten the horrific incident that triggered the proposal of this law. In 2018, Hong Kong national Chan Tong Kai traveled with his pregnant girlfriend to Taiwan and murdered her in a hotel room before fleeing back to Hong Kong. Because there wasn't an extradition treaty in place between Hong Kong and Taiwan, Hong Kong police couldn't arrest Chen and extradite him back to Taiwan. In addition, Chen also couldn't stand trial in Hong Kong as the murder took place in Taiwan. The local government in Hong Kong was caught in a very awkward and very dangerous situation for society, and local authorities used Taiwan's request for Chen to be extradited as the reason for proposing a new extradition bill. Immediately following the proposal of this bill, protests erupted throughout the city as many Hong Kong citizens feared the Chinese government could potentially abuse their power and use this new extradition bill to extradite any Hong Kong national they wanted back to mainland China to stand trial. What's interesting to note is that from the beginning, China was not involved in advancing this extradition bill, nor showing its power over Hong Kong's judicial system. However, from the beginning, Hong Kong protesters targeted the government in Beijing, and immediately a very anti-China movement began spreading amongst the protesters. During the height of the protests, any person or business from mainland China was targeted, and the situation became so dangerous that even common people who were speaking Mandarin Chinese in the streets were beaten and abused as these young Hong Kong protesters divided the city and tried to cut ties with anything from mainland China. Despite not realizing the need for this logical extradition treaty, the Hong Kong youth were brainwashed to believe that China was breaking its commitment to the one country, two systems principle. But where does this fear for Beijing come from? Filled with a passion to save Hong Kong, Hong Kong youth chose to stand in the forefront of these protests. Instead of focusing on school and working hard in a career, these youth decided to give up their lives to fight for democracy and the freedoms of the city. In their fantasy, they became heroes of a city by fighting against this superpower, China. However, the Chinese government was not even involved. It only offered its support to the Hong Kong government amid the ongoing protests. Do a quick Google search on the 2019 Hong Kong protests and you'll find images of shops, streets, traffic lights, and even MTR stations being destroyed and set on fire. Violent protesters destroyed one of the city's most iconic universities and even killed an elderly man by throwing a brick directly at his face. Another Hong Kong man was doused in lighter fluid and set on fire by an angry group of Hong Kong youth. Hong Kong, nicknamed Asia's world city, was in complete chaos and suffering. Something had to be done to restore the civil order back to society. It became clear the violence and terrorism from the protesters was hurting the city. Hong Kong businesses were failing and it was impacting Hong Kong's status as a global financial hub. Since the 1997 handover, mainland China has stationed People Liberation Army troops in Hong Kong. However, the army has always kept a low profile in the city, rarely making public appearances on the streets of Hong Kong. Despite the utter chaos the 2019 protesters brought to the city, 
The Beijing government never used the Public Liberation Army against the people. In fact, the one time mainland Chinese troops were deployed in the city of Hong Kong, they didn't bring weapons or guns, but instead brought shovels and buckets and started cleaning and repairing the mess left behind by these violent Hong Kong protesters. Throughout the past 25 years, People's Liberation Army troops have always operated in strict accordance with the law, being careful to not interfere in local affairs. Their presence in Hong Kong was to help maintain social order, only if requested by the local Hong Kong government. This is a clear example of how the government in Beijing has shown its respect and determination for the local government in Hong Kong to preserve much of what makes Hong Kong unique. The passing of the national security law was actually one of the requirements of the handover in 1997. And another clear example of how Beijing allowed Hong Kong government to function independently, the Chinese government never forced the security law into existence. They waited for 23 years before passing this law and only did so when the protests became so violent that the future and stability of Hong Kong became a major concern. So has the Beijing government broken its promise to Hong Kong? The one country, two systems principle is enshrined in a document called the Basic Law, Hong Kong's mini constitution, giving the city a high degree of autonomy. Yet very few people in Hong Kong are aware of and understand the relationship between the constitution of China and the Basic Law of Hong Kong. In fact, it's the constitution of China which provides the legislative backing for the Basic Law. And without this, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region would not have existed. Ultimately, Hong Kong is part of China and ultimately it does fall under the jurisdiction of the central government in Beijing. This is why every chief executive of Hong Kong, the highest ranking government official, has a close relationship with China's government. According to a survey by the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce on the impact this new national security law would have for the future of Hong Kong, the majority of respondents, over 61%, believe that the law will either have a positive or no impact on all of their businesses over the long term. In the past 25 years, China has become the world's second largest economy. Together with its increasing political and economic influence, not just on Hong Kong, but our entire world. This may also be why Hong Kong residents feel China is asserting its increasing influence on Hong Kong. Let's not forget that Hong Kong used to be 18% of China's GDP. Now it's just over 2%. That's the fundamental reason why China doesn't need Hong Kong to be another Shanghai or Shenzhen. It's in China's best interest to have Hong Kong retain its special status and uniqueness. From 1997 to 2022, the world has changed dramatically, but China hasn't broken its promise to Hong Kong. And in fact, the future of the city still remains very bright. In this recent article from the South China Morning Post, it shares that Hong Kong's Asian expats from Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand remain confident and see the city as a land of opportunities. Even during the pandemic and with all the challenges the city is facing today, Hong Kong still ranks among the world's top financial centers, trailing only New York and London. On July 1st, Carrie Lam will officially end her term as the Hong Kong chief executive, and John Lee, a former Hong Kong policeman, will take over as the new leader of the city. With his slogan, We and Us, a new chapter together, the city will begin the next 25-year period as Asia's world city. Everyone, Hong Kong is one of the world's biggest and most important financial hubs and a mecca for foreign investment around the world. I'd like to take a minute to tell you more about Masterworks.io, a unique investment platform with whom I partnered with for today's important video. Masterworks was founded in 2017 by a top 100 art collector and tech entrepreneurs who together have founded companies valued at over $1 billion. With over 75 years of art buying experience, Masterworks are one of the largest art buyers in the market today. The total wealth held in art is estimated to be worth $1.7 trillion, and Deloitte projects it to grow an additional $900 million by 2026. As political, economic, and supply chain issues are impacting the future of the stock market, high-end quality art is a unique investment vehicle that is not correlated to stocks or bonds. Masterworks is the platform to use for investing in contemporary blue chip art pieces and contemporary art pieces have outpaced the S&P 500 total return by 164% for the past 25 years. In addition, Masterworks has sold three paintings since 2017, each returning over 30% net IRR to investors. There's currently a waitlist to sign up, but with my code, you can skip the waitlist and start investing today. 
Everyone, if you enjoy the work that I do here on YouTube, I would also like to encourage you to come join our team on Patreon, where you can receive exclusive updates from me and help this channel grow even faster. Make sure you take advantage and sign up with Masterworks to skip the wait list. And as always, thank you for being amazing supporters to this channel, and I look forward to seeing you all in a future video.